we've got so much of our trash out there that it's now a hazard to navigate throughout this whole convergent zone in the North Pacific. We ran into big wooden spools of wire at least four feet in diameter ran into the bow of our boat. I'm scared to go back out there because there's so much crap out there that I'm bumping into. We're finding it so thick now in some areas that I had to stop using the motor. I was in a little nine-foot dinghy and I had to stop because it was coming so fast I had to row between pieces. So it's like a piece here, roll a little bit, another piece over here, roll. Uh, it's covering enormous areas of the ocean. We've just pulled out some uh, pre-production plastic pellets from the the water right here, they're uh, sometimes called nurdles. This is one right here. This is a, a, a very large component of the waste out here is actually coming directly from the plastic industry. Uh, how many do we have right here right now? We have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight and we've spent about five minutes getting eight of them from a little area that's just no bigger than a couple of square feet right here. It's a plastic cesspool. It's disgusting. And we think there's 100 million tons in all the oceans as a very conservative figure of our plastic waste. That 100 million tons could, if you just consider 10% of the 250 million tons that are made every year worldwide getting loose, 10% of that would be 25 million tons. So it would only take four years to get another 100 million tons. Well, one of the things about uh, plastic is its use as a packaging material. Uh, people want to have their product packaged in such a way that it doesn't corrode and doesn't rot uh, before it gets to the consumer. There's absolutely no reason to wrap an orange or a banana in plastic because it has a wonderful package made by nature. I'm looking to uh, create a movement around the issue of plastic pollution uh, and in order to have political traction with any movement, you need a lot of people. You need to get people from all walks of life to join your movement. And that is not the case right now. We, gotta, we have to build change. We're not, we're not celebrating what we did because we haven't done it yet. Uh, people don't take suggestions. People respond to crises. Uh, one of the things that concerns me most about the present environmental crisis that we face is the callous way uh, the adult population uh, thinks about what it's leaving to its heirs. Uh, and what we're leaving them is a big mess. This is a scraping of one square foot. This is one square foot of beach sand, just wow. the stuff scraped off the surface. Really? So this sand just came from an area that lot, that size right there, just like oh, this. One square foot. So that's that's one square foot of beach sand. So that's what our beaches are turning into. And if anyone doubts our ability to change the entire world, uh, the largest part of it, the ocean, has now been changed by us in a way that's extremely ugly. And plastics in the ocean is a visible symbol of our excesses. And that's what I'm here to tell you about, the urgency that uh, the concept of throwaway persistent materials like plastic has to be changed.